Hello everyone, um, I found how to create contact sheets today and I'm going to share that with you. Um, my name is Joseph and you're welcome to Photoshop. Alright, so contact sheets look a little bit like what I have currently on my screen. And uh, I'm usually using different color palettes here today. So I just created this um, different colors representing the, um, a set of images that you got from your shoot. And you can have them in portrait, landscape, whatever way. Um, Contact sheets is just the best way of putting all of them together on your sheet and either you email them to a client or you print them out or something of the sort. I like to work in squares because um, sometimes I can get more control over the number of uh, um, images and then probably the arrangement as well. So I like to work in squares. But um, if your client is going to print and then look at the images, then you can decide to work in different uh, paper formats and stuff. So I'm just quickly going to close this out. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought I was completely working on something else, so I'll just minimize that. OK, so I'm just going to go straight into how to create these contact sheets. It's a little bit of a hidden feature, but it's very, very helpful. So you need to know where your images are on your desktop. Go to File, come all the way down to Automate, and come down to contact sheet. When you click on it, it's going to open a new dialog box. And there you have a bunch of settings that you can adjust. Um, source images determines where you're going to source the images from. And you can either use files, folders, or even bridge or any other um, open documents. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at files because of the individual files that I need. So then I'm going to go click browse. It's going to open. Um, a dialog box and then I can navigate to where my uh, pictures are. In this case, they're in the folder that I named contact sheets. I'm just going to click one of them and hit Command or Control A, which is going to select all the pictures in that folder and I'm going to hit open. Now you can see it's tagged them in the dialog box, all the images that I had. And this is, I haven't given this a particular name, I just used a name that came with um, the images after I exported them as JPEGs. So it came as on title 903904. So you can decide to rename them before you get to this stage. And so that you can maybe probably name them A, B, C, D, or A1, A2, whichever way, whichever name works for you. And that's going to appear here. And so that's going to make it very easy for your client to select as well. You can decide to work in inches, centimeters, or pixels. But I'm going to leave it here at inches because um, if you want to set a document to a size that can be printed, then you can simply input the values in here that you want. But here I'm going to work with a square, just 36 inches by 36 inches, which is pretty large. Um, I'm reducing the resolution to 200 pixels. I'm going to keep the mode RGB, even though there are several options here. Um, 8 bit sRGB, and I'm going to flatten all layers. So what it's going to do is it's going to merge everything after it's automated the process and put it on one single layer, which I find to be very, very cool. Okay. So when you come down to the thumbnails area, um, it's this is where you can decide how to arrange your images. And I like to go across first. So it's gonna start from the left all the way to the right till all the images are done. You can also decide to do a down first, which is gonna come from the top all the way down, then go to the right column, come from up all the way down until the entire document is filled again. Um, in my columns, I want to make it 6 and my rows 5 because I know that the total number of images in that folder were 30 and 6 times 5 is 30. So it's going to fit into the square perfectly. Uh, you can also use auto spacing, but I like to leave it checked and so Photoshop is going to do the calculations um, by itself. And down here where you have use file name as caption, this is why I mentioned. So these are the file names and it's going to use them as a caption. So whatever name you had chosen in the beginning, that is what is going to be the caption for the pictures and then the clients can decide to select that um, as well. Okay, so the font style, you can also choose anything that you want, but in this case, I'm leaving it a real way. You can determine the uh, font size and all that. So um, you can save this preset. Let's say if this was for a particular company, let's say Flowshop. When, you, when I save this preset into a, docu into a document and name it as um, Flowshop Contact Sheet Preset, Anytime I am, I have to do this process again for Flowshop, for any other image, any other set of images I've taken for them, I can easily come and load and, I mean, load the saved preset. I'm going to keep the settings just as it is. And 
um, I can just continue with the process. So now I'm okay with everything I've done in here inside the context sheet. I'm just gonna hit okay. And Photoshop is gonna by its own um, arrange all the different images that were in the folder and it's gonna stack them all together and also arrange them. Plus, it's gonna add the name or the caption uh, to it. And that name or caption, I like to include because that's the only way that the clients can choose the pictures that they love based on that. So this is gonna be a little bit of a tedious process, but Photoshop is gonna quickly run through depending on the speed of your machine and all of that. Um, but let's just uh, wait for Photoshop to do its own thing and then we can continue from there. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, Photoshop is done creating um, the context sheet. When I zoom in a bit, you can see it has the untitled 901, 902, and so the client can always say, um, hey, I like uh, 903, um, I like 909, I like uh, 914, and then based on that, you can also go back to the um, images in your in your folder and edit those images based on the selections that the client has made. Okay, another thing that you can do again is then uh, you can go to File, um, Save As, and then you can save um, it in any kind of format that you want for your client, TIFF, JPEG, or PSD, any way that you want to do that. But I'm not going to do it in this case. Um, if you want to save for web also, you can go to File, Save for Web, and you can input your uh, values, and then you can save the entire document. Okay, because we chose flatten uh, images, it did not create all these individual images on different layers. It's rather merged everything onto one. And I find that pretty handy. After all, the client is not going to move any of these um, images as I indicated earlier. Um, so yes, this is how I basically like to do it. And all of them have been named as well. And so depending on what the client chooses, the client just has to select the name um, associated with that particular picture and then give you the um, the, the captions and the names and then you can work off from that okay so thank you very much for um, watching this episode if you have a better way of doing this kindly let me know in the comments down below don't forget to like subscribe and share if you enjoyed this episode thank you again and see you next week